Joining us now is Kamal Sri Kumar, president of Sri Kumar uh, Global Strategies. Um, do you believe uh, Loretta Mester at this point, Sri, and uh, what's the motivation? Do you think she really uh, believes that that is the case? Is, is there some massaging of the markets um, by uh, Loretta Mester? Or how do you take her comments, Sri, and do you, do you think that is where we go? Good morning, Joe. First of all, I think various Fed governors, presidents m keep making statements contradicting each other. I'm opposed to their speaking publicly. All that does is to cause confusion. Now, going to specifically what she said last night, she may want it to go a lot higher. It may well be her preference, but I don't think she's going to get it. We have already had one credit event in the form of the banking crisis. I think within the next three to four months, I think we'll have another credit event coming from somewhere, and the Fed is going to buckle and is going to start cutting rates before the end of the year. She is not going to get the interest rates going substantially higher than 5%. Why do I say that? You mentioned at the beginning of our discussion, look at the two-year and the 10-year. The both of them have fallen, and the two-year was above 5% just about a month ago and has now fallen below 4%. Second, the 2 to 10 yield curve uh, inversion peaked at minus 110 basis points a month ago. Now it's just half that, minus 55. The yield curve typically steepens and is still staying negative when it expects a recovery from a recession. So what the yield curve is saying is, expect the recession to begin in the second half of 2023. Look for a recovery to be somewhere close to the mid-2024 point. Lastly, the DXY, the dollar index, has fallen sharply in the last few days. It has gone down quite a bit over the past month. And that is also saying to me, that the dollar holders do not believe that the Fed can tighten much. So a lot of reasons, Joe, why the Fed is going to remain relatively easy, no matter what may be the hawkish messages they give in public. Do you think, uh, we talked about Jamie Dimon a lot yesterday, and he, he made some, some comments that, that to me seemed like they were uh, mutually exclusive uh, for the other. So, he thinks that we're far from over for, in terms of this, what he calls a crisis uh, in the financial sector, but still thinks uh, inflation is going to remain uh, stubborn and that, that we're probably headed to higher rates than people think. I would, I would think that if, if the crisis continues, uh, not only does the Fed take a lighter touch, but it also does some of the tightening for the Fed in terms of credit contraction. So don't, I don't really see how that, that, that's logical, that, that thinking, that thought process. I would agree with you rather than with Jamie Dimon on that. I think the banking crisis is disinflationary. If you have one more credit event, whatever that may be, that is going to push inflationary expectations down even further. And I agree with you as well. It is going to do the job partly that the Fed has to do. Three. But here is where I would agree with him. I would agree with him in terms of saying the banking crisis is not over. There are lots of regional banks which have mismatched maturities. And we just found one of them come out of the woodwork, maybe two. There are others which are going to come out eventually.